Hello everyone, welcome to Programming Cradle. It is almost about to be three years ever since I come to the UK to pursue my master's in data science. And uh, it is almost the time where people might be nearing their end of post-study work visa or graduate visa. So I'm starting to see number of people, they are moving back to their home country because either they couldn't find a job or they couldn't find a sponsorship job. So that's what I wanted to talk about in this video, things they did or things they should have done. Uh, I did talk about this very same thing uh, probably last year, uh, that mistake that you shouldn't do and uh, instead what you should do. So I wanted to re-emphasize on that point again in this video, just so you guys are better prepared and you know where to invest your time and uh, what will help you in long run. So that's exactly what I want to discuss in this video. If you are new here or if you subscribe to the channel, please subscribe to the channel and be a part of Programming Kittle family. Also hit the bell icon so that you get notified each time when our video goes live. And if you want to like in this video, please give a thumbs up. It keeps you motivated to make such videos for you guys. With that being said, let's start our discussion. So, like I said, number of people are moving back to India or to their home country because they couldn't find a job in the first place. We'll talk about the sponsorship job, which adds another layer of complexity but the first thing is they couldn't find a job in their relevant domain so even they did masters in data science uh, but then they couldn't find a job in data science uh, domain or data science industry simply because they focus too much of their energy and time into part-time jobs uh, and later on they move they turn that uh, part-time job to full-time job so they were working 40 hours a week and after doing that much work, it just leaves you with no energy or time to work on yourself and to work on your own project and to maybe learn some new things. So they just invested too much of their time into those things and they didn't have enough time to work on themselves. And eventually they couldn't find a job. And uh, to get a sponsorship job, the first step is to get a job in your relevant domain. And then eventually you will be able to find a sponsorship. But sometimes, yes, of course, if uh, things are not good and companies do have limited number of sponsorships and if they cannot provide you a sponsorship, then uh, either you can find a job in some other company which is willing to provide you a sponsorship. Uh, and for that, you might have gained some experience while working on your post-study work visa. So it helps to find a job in some other company. Um, which will be willing to provide you a sponsorship. So it is important to find a job in the first place uh, rather than being fixated on finding a sponsorship job uh, at the get go. If you're able to find it, that's well and good. But if you are a fresher, if you are someone who doesn't have a lot of experience for you, it might be a little hard to find a sponsorship job right from the get go. So it's important to get into the domain, gain a couple of years of experience and then maybe try to approach your manager uh, for a sponsorship and most often uh, they will agree to provide you a sponsorship as long as you have added value to the team. But if they are not, then at least you have experience now and you should be able to apply in other companies and you should be able to get a job in the other company. So that's the first thing. So it's important to focus on your skills, on your projects, and you should focus on learning different things. So when you do masters, you do all the uh, basic foundation stuff. So after doing your masters, you will know what are the things which are important to become a data scientist or data analyst. And uh, after that, you need to you need to work on a lot of other things like uh, cloud computing. So the good thing about all most of the universities in the, in the UK is that they do provide you cloud platform. So even while doing your masters, you should be able to practice how to use various cloud services. And if you practice those things in your masters, I think you'll be in a good position to be able to use those things in your job as well. So it's important that you put those skills in your CV that you have used AWS, you have used GCP or Azure, things like that. So it's important to do that. But for some reason, you couldn't use those things in your masters. I think it would be 
a good time once you finish your masters and you're looking for a job that would be a suitable time to maybe do some projects on uh, those cloud platforms maybe take a udemy course or something to learn more about what all services different cloud providers provide so that you are much more familiar uh, what services to use where to use how to use those kind of things you don't need to understand the architecture of a cloud platform how to set up different clusters those kind of things all you need to know is how to use an instance how to use different services for your data science project so that is something which is very important and you need to work on in newcastle university they used to provide azure cluster so it was really good for me personally to play around things and uh, get my hands dirty there and uh, learn a bit about that and uh, later on i did take uh, aws course as well just to make myself familiar how aws works what all services are there and i learned quite a lot from there as well so i would suggest it is important you spend some time there as well now moving on to the next thing it would be learning more about git and stuff so i'm not going to talk about these things in detail like what all things you should learn because I've already made a video about that. Um, if you want to check that video out, I will leave a card somewhere here and you should be able to watch that video. I will just briefly mention a few things here. Uh, the next thing is Git. And I think it is a better thing to do during your masters because then you will be working on a lot of uh, different type of projects and maybe you can have a friend circle and you all can work collaboratively on a project and then you can uh, use Git to uh, do collaboration part of thing so i think it's important to do that as well and uh, the next thing i would say is keep yourself updated and uh, updated maybe uh, what i mean is in a lot of universities they do keep their course content up to date but then it's really hard for them to teach you everything so they will teach you all the basic foundations so they will teach you traditional machine learning deep learning and then jni probably uh, but then they will not go in depth so it's important and it's the right time for you to get into those things and try out different uh, recent technique technologies and uh, maybe make those projects around those concepts so that your profile will look up to date and keep working on those kind of projects and keep keep preparing yourself for interviews because learning a concept is a completely different thing than preparing for an interview it's very important you prepare yourself for an interview because when you are learning something and you probably will be able to understand all the things properly but when it comes to explaining those things to the interviewer it's a completely different thing uh, so because you will have nerves you will have to control a lot of things you need to be able to present properly you need to be really good at speaking as well so there are quite a lot of things and factors which come into play in an interview so you need to prepare for interview rather than just focusing on the concepts so that is also a very important thing because in some of the interviews where i i saw some of the people and when i asked them questions they had probably worked on those concepts they had projects on their cv but they struggled to explain it they were sweating all over they were way too nervous so when you are that nervous even if you know something you won't be able to explain those things so you need to you need to practice those things as well i think you should every day uh, take a mock interview you can do it yourself just prepare a set of questions and try to answer those questions record yourself and uh, go back to that video watch that video and see where you are making mistakes where you are not feeling confident enough so when you do those things i think it will make you much more comfortable and you'll be able to perform much better in interview so spend some time there as well so those are the things which you should do and don't focus too much on part-time jobs it's good to work on uh, part-time jobs there also you gain some experience some knowledge you build some connections but those connections or knowledge are not going to eventually help you find a job in your relevant domain and uh, when you come from your home country and when you apply for a student visa there you do show some kind of uh, funds so i'm assuming you might be having funds to survive in the uk for nine months but i'm not saying that you should not find a part-time job you should definitely do a part-time job but at least for first semester 
uh, try to focus on your course uh, don't get distracted about a lot of other things because as soon as you start making those initial bit of money it just becomes very addictive and you feel like doing more and more so that's why i would say first semester give it to your studies in second semester you should start finding internships in data science because if you are able to find internship it will help you in both the ways you will be earning as well on top of that you will be gaining some experience so and probably eventually you'll be able to convert that internship into your full-time job as well so you should try to find internship first but in parallel of course you can try to apply for part-time jobs as well in case you feel like you absolutely need funds and uh, you don't want to take out funds from your savings so but then i will never suggest working more than 20 hours on part-time job even after you finish your masters i wouldn't suggest doing that so that's what i wanted to discuss in this video and it's kind of really hard to see so many people going back uh, my friend circle is not a big one but even in that i'm able to see a couple of people going back so i'm assuming there will be quite a lot of people uh, who couldn't find a job and uh, they have to move back to the home country so yeah it is what it is um, and also the current job market is not helping so you need to focus on right things you need to dedicate your time effort energy into right things to improve yourself and uh, build a good profile so that you will be able to survive in this uh, tough uh, competitive job market so that's what i want to discuss i hope you found this video helpful please uh, give it a thumbs up if you found this video helpful and don't forget to subscribe share like and comment uh, i'll see you in the next one bye happy learning